Hey team, this mini lesson is looking at urban processes and we'll have a look at Greater Auckland and see what processes are happening in the city. First of all we're going to zoom in near the middle and check out the process of centralisation. Centralisation is the process where activities are concentrated towards the middle and in Auckland we can see that there's a concentration of commercial and retail activities um, in the CBD. So along Queen Street, which runs down the middle there, and near the Sky Tower, you can see the big long shadow. Um, there's a concentration of retail at the ground floor for all the pedestrian traffic. And then we have things like insurance, accounting, and banking occupy the uh, upper levels of the tall buildings. Not too far away, uh, we have the process of land reclamation. And that's when people change the shape of the land and try and get more land by using landfill and um, raising it above the sea. And we can see in Auckland we've got the port facilities located near the CBD and it makes it much easier for the ships to load and unload their cargo when they can all pull up um, next to the wharf and a natural coastline wouldn't allow as much of that. All the land um, on the coastal side of Key Street, which is this street that runs along here, has been reclaimed. If we zoom out a little bit, we'll see our third process. Um, we're going to look at state housing development. And in the 1950s and 60s, the government spent a lot of money setting up um, housing, especially low-income housing, to serve the people that will be working in the um, government-made government -made factories. So this is the suburb of Glen Innes, one of the original state housing developments. And you can see from the road pattern that it was very much a planned area. The houses in a state housing um, development are all pretty similar and similar size section. They're actually really robust um, buildings and they're quite sought after by property developers today. Next we're going to go to the edge of the city and this is where Auckland has been created before your eyes. And we can see a new residential development. Um, some of the areas haven't even got houses on yet. And you can see the, the street pattern that's quite popular in the 90s and um, since the year 2000 is this cul-de-sac pattern. It actually causes a lot of traffic problems because they all have to feed onto the next street and then those streets feed onto the main road and uh, it gets very congested. A little further along we can see the very edge of Auckland City. So this is the, um, the boundary that's been set so no more development can take place past. Okay, zooming out again. Our next process is decentralisation. So whereas centralisation was concentrating towards the middle, decentralisation is when people deliberately um, put land uses on the edge of the city to try and take pressure off the middle. So in the 1950s the government set up Manukau City. It's a self-contained urban settlement. It has its own industrial areas and retail and commercial centres and uh, plenty of housing to go along with it and it's grown so much that it's merged with Auckland itself um, but the idea was that it would take pressure off Auckland City. One of the reasons why Auckland uh, Manukau has grown so much is its proximity to the airport and over at the airport we can see another urban process called agglomeration and this is when similar economic activities group together to take advantage of economies of scale and close to the airport we have lots of um, travel related industries grouping together. We have things like uh, rental car companies, convenience food and hotels and motels all grouping close to the airport. In the suburb of Penrose uh, we have the process of industrialization and as you can probably tell from the picture we've got lots of factories and warehouses um, and these are concentrated together once again to take advantage of economies of scale but also to be close to major transport links like the main trunk railway and the motorway. Um, it's also quite common these days for um, urban centres to locate their entertainment venues like stadiums in the industrial area so they don't uh, disturb neighbouring houses. It's a bit different from Eden Park which is going to be the host to the World Cup uh, Rugby World Cup final in 2011 and as you can see that's fully surrounded by 
um, residential development, so they have issues with lighting and noise and traffic congestion. Right near Eden Park we have the volcanic cone of Mount Eden, and this is a really good example of one of Auckland's 48 volcanoes. And this process is a little bit different because it's not an urban process, it's not a human process, it's a natural process, but it's had a big impact on the layout of Auckland and where development has occurred. Most of the cones have been kept free of um, residential development. It'd be a prime spot to have a house and get great views, um, but they've left them as parks and reserves. Okay, so there we go, those are our eight urban processes and they each play a little role in the shape and layout of Auckland City. I'm already looking forward to our next mini lesson.